I made 10 million dollars last year, cash, on my bank account, and I'm just 30. It's funny because four years ago, I was broke and my girlfriend was paying the rent. All I had was a laptop and a backpack. How did I get there? How could you get there? There's no secret. This is not the story where I tell you that there is this one thing that will help you to become a multimillionaire. This is the story of struggles and failures, falls and learnings, years of not knowing whether or not it will work, but keep trying anyway. My wish is that whoever you are, wherever you're from, you realize that you're only one failure away from what you want in life. True, but you don't know that until you get money. I didn't know that either. I was dreaming of success and how it could change my lifestyle. Great adventures, events, conferences, being known for my success, making a name for myself. Guillaume. Guillaume. Guillaume Moubech. Bonjour. I mean, who doesn't want to be special? But at that time, it was only dreams. As a kid, I used to envy my wealthy friends. I felt like they had it all. Exotic vacations, fancy flats with their own bedrooms. My parents were doing okay and I had everything I needed, but I wanted so much more. Those kids. The ones who had everything. I felt like if I could get their lifestyle, I'll be seen for who I really am. But I stayed quiet, didn't talk about it too much. Having the ambition to make a lot of money isn't quite something you want to brag about in France. So I enjoyed the little things, played basketball a lot and worked my ass off on top of my studies, dreaming of traveling the world for a year. Visit all these exotic places I never had the chance to visit before. And you know what? I did it. Since I didn't have enough money, despite years of saving, I decided to leverage the power of social networks. I spent the year traveling the whole world with very little money. And if I was capable of doing that, I was capable of anything. I was unstoppable. And I possibly got addicted to ambitious adventures in the making of that trip. But I learned one essential thing during this year. Happiness equals freedom and vice versa. In every school I went to, in every internship I got, I always struggle with figures of authority. What's more frustrating than someone telling you what to do and how to do it, especially when their ways are outdated, dumb and irrelevant. What's more enraging than a stubborn manager who doesn't want to hear about new ways to improve efficiency. Coming to that realization, I made a promise to myself. When I come back to Paris, I'm gonna do everything I can to become my own boss, doing things my way. Coming back to Paris, I went to the most prestigious business school in Europe. I had never been surrounded with so many wealthy people. I knew I wasn't the wealthiest, so if I wanted to get noticed and create a name for myself, I had to do things differently. I had to start a new challenge, being my own boss. What I didn't know back then is I had no clue about how to build a business. But I went for it anyway. After all, I was in the best French business school, so I figured it out. My dad is a graphic designer, so he knows how to print t-shirts. That's it! We're gonna launch a t-shirt brand called Paris Rest en Rêve. I went with two friends on Paris rooftops for a photo shoot. In two months, I had a community of 3,000 people ready to buy our t-shirts. We were going to make so much money, I didn't want to be out of stocks. At least, that's what I thought. Launching day came. First order, from a friend. A second one, a third one. Then nothing, for a month, nothing. I couldn't believe it. Was it the design? Was it because of my dad? Was it because of the marketing? Did I suck at building a business? Fuck. One of my classmates wants to build an acquisition agency. He wants me to partner up. Not what I had in mind, but fuck it. At least I'll be kind of my own boss, just not totally in charge. We worked our asses off, building our expertise on the number one problem of any business, finding new clients. We found clients for our clients. Little by little, we saw our numbers grow faster and faster. Our clients were coming to us, random strangers too, asking us to give them advice. What's happening? Am I someone people should listen to? What do I know that they don't? Eventually, while listening to their pain points and helping them, I figured it out. I know how to build relationships. When I reach out to someone, I don't try to sell. 
I start a conversation. And people don't do that. They want to sell right away. They're wrong. When I looked around, I only saw people trying to find a hack, a silver bullet. But building and growing a business is about building relationships. And building relationships is about personalization. The more you do your research on the person you want to connect with, the higher your chances that they actually respond. I felt special. There's a way to rise above. We cracked something. I love the feeling of helping people, but I felt like I could do more. I wanted something that I could do at scale in order to help even more people. We should build a software. But my partner, well, he wanted to focus on the agency. As I met more and more people asking for guidance, as I helped more and more individuals, I felt like I was missing out on my own journey. So I sold my shares and moved on. It was time for me to prove myself I could build a real business on my own. I had a project, but I needed developers. I started to interview people on Upwork, a platform where you can hire freelancers worldwide, and decided to start working with a Russian developer and his team. With the money of the shares I just sold, I went to Russia to work with them. During this trip, I almost got arrested, I almost died, and also, I almost had an awesome product. After months of working day and night, I ended up with nothing. So I came back to Paris, they had my parents in the exact same bedroom I had left to be free and independent a few years ago. I was a fucking failure. I will never build anything alone. My parents were telling me to take a job in companies where I had my internships. But I won't be my own boss. I won't be free. What should I do? I was so fucking broke, so fucking down, so disappointed with myself. I had lost all my self-confidence. What a better ego boost than to go on Tinder. I was gonna install the app when I received a match with my soon-to-be girlfriend. A few months later, she was giving me the keys to her flat. It was four years ago. I went back to Station F to surround myself with ambitious entrepreneurs. That's where I met Louis. You see, Louis is a serial entrepreneur. He had started and sold many businesses already. I wanted to be just like him. He asked me about my journey. And as we were speaking, I saw his attitude shift. I was focused on the mistakes I made and on the failures, but he was seeing the drive, the ambition, all the things I had done in so little time. He made me realize that I've been through a lot and that I tried my best every single time. He made me realize that I wasn't afraid to go all in. When I said yes, it was a fuck yes, and no was a fuck no. I invested everything I I had at the time to build something. I just had to keep pushing the ball up the hill even if it fell down on the other side. So I went on the chase to raise funds to develop my project. We applied at Y Combinator, the best startup incubator in the world. They were asking for a demo, but there was no product. I decided to bend the rules and find a workaround. It almost worked until the jury felt like they were hacked and roasted us. So I failed, again. But something was keeping me up. I've been rejecting from a famous incubator. Yes, I'll probably never find investors, indeed. The project may be a little overkill to start from nothing, okay. But I was there. I received an email from Sam Altman. I was surrounded by ambitious people and I wasn't gonna let it go. I just had to find a new project, one that we could build on our own with only two devs and not to depend on investments nor funds, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. I had to ask myself the right questions. What is my expertise? What problem can I solve that people will be happy to pay for? What do I know that people don't? What can I bring to the world? That's it. We should build software that help people grow their business and build relationships. After two weeks, Lemnis was born. After one year, Lempire was born and I was making more money than my friends. After three and a half years, Lempire was valued at $150 million. This was last fall, and we sold 20% of the company for $30 million. So yeah, that's how I became a multimillionaire at age 30. But how does it feel? That's what people don't talk about. You'll see plenty of stories like mine, where people are shining on social media, sharing their fancy houses and cars, where they are actually telling their own success story. But could becoming a millionaire make you really happy? Will it change your relationship with others? Will it bring you everything you need? Could you even retire? Should I retire? And if you don't care about all that, would you fancy to have a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a millionaire? If that's the case, hit the subscribe button because that's the topic of the next two video. Peace!